Hey, it's Jessie from Squeegee and Ink, and in this video, we're going to show you how we manually screen print with water based inks. Following on from our recent trip to Magna Colors, we wanted to make sure this latest design was solely printed with water based ink. In this video, we're going to show you our ink choices, we're going to talk to you about our mesh choices and how we set up our screen for water based manual printing. We're going to manually print the four color design. We're going to show you how we cure water-based ink. And finally, we're going to do a wash test on our printed shirt. This is the t-shirt design we're going to be printing in this video. We fund our YouTube video by the sale of our Blind Maggot t-shirts. And this one is called Plucking in the Bushes and it's a four color collaboration design that we did with a local brewery. The brewery is called Delphic Brewing and we have their name on the front there along with our Blind Maggot logo. And we've done some extra special touches with this design so we've got the Delphic logo on the swing tag. We've also got some little bags that they're all going in and um, you can get a massive 10 pounds off as a squeegee viewer when you buy this shirt on the blindmaggot.co.uk website when you add squeegee in the coupon code section. The inks that we're going to be printing with today is the MagnaPrint self-leveling range. This particular range of inks has been specifically designed for manual screen printing, which is the big reason why we went for it. So it's supposed to stay open in the mesh longer and reduce pinholes and all sorts of problems that manual screen printers might come across. Um, it's also supposed to be good on a really wide range of garment colors. So all the way from lights through to darks, which again is good for us because we print on a lot of black t-shirts. It's also going to fit in with our normal production. So uh, when you cure this ink, you want to have um, a minute of curing time and you want the temperature to be 165 degrees. We're really used to curing all sorts of inks at that temperature, like with our plaster inks, and we're just going to be able to use our big buddy as usual. Another good thing about this, this ink range is that you get this kind of neutral clear base and then you're going to be able to use that and pigment it with all the different range of colors and that's how we're going to mix our four colors today and then also if you wanted to you could get the self-leveling white base and that one's used for highlight whites to make make the design pop a bit it's also used as an under base or you could even put pigment in it and get a range of pastel colors The great thing about using the Magna Colors ink system is the ability to quite easily mix up Pantone colors. Uh, when we're at Magna Colors, they even had this um, automatic dispenser, which like was in conjunction with Magna Mix, which is their kind of their formula system. Uh, as we're just a tiny studio, obviously we don't have one of those, but we're just going to be manually putting the pigments into the base with a small digital scales. We're going to start by finding our Pantone color and I am in Separation Studio Next and it already has the Pantone's reference for each color. So this is labeled as the green is 369C and I've got red which is Pantone 485C and this very like deep rich purple should be 669C. I've also chosen a black so that in combination they look like this on that kind of natural on the natural raw shirt that we've picked so once i have these i can go ahead and pick one so 369c i can input that into the magnamix app which i've downloaded from the magna colors website and what that is is they've already figured out the formulas and kind of like ratios of ink for all of the different pantones we're actually using a a relatively new ink that they've come up with called self leveling and uh, this one hasn't got the full range of pantones yet however i was on a call to magna colors earlier and i was assured that if i used the aquaflex range of formula for this 
then that Pantone will still work just as well for the self-leveling. So I'm going to go ahead and input that into the Magnamix app. So I've got the choice of having Magna Color, I mean Magna Formula or my own formula. I'm going to let them do it. You could have some like pre-saved ones in there if you wanted. Then I'm going to choose from the range. So this is mainly about like the base of the type of ink that you're using. So normally I'd use self-leveling, but my Pantones went in there, so I'm going to use the Aquaflex as my base. And then I'm going to pick the 369 Pantone from the list. So they've already gone in and worked out what 369 is with all the different combinations of their pigments. So let's go find it. There's a lot that they've done here. Imagine figuring out all these colors. 369. So once I've picked 369, now I can pick the amount, the grams that I want to mix. I'm anticipating that I want to mix around 500 milliliters or grams of ink. So I'm going to type that in here and I'm going to press process. There is a part on the website which has an estimator, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this. So I'm going to press process and it gives me my formula. So it's given it in percentages and quantities in grams. I'm going to go ahead, print this off and I'm ready to start mixing my inks. This is my water-based ink mixing station. So I make sure to keep my Plasol inks over there and my water-based over here. This just stops any cross-contamination and it means that I know exactly how to treat these inks, how to clean the surfaces and that type of thing. When it comes to mixing our inks, we like to make sure that we have a flat surface to go on and also that we have two sets of scales. So we found that the small set can read like parts of grams. So that's if we're only mixing up a small quantity, then the formula might ask for like 0.4 grams and our larger scale can't read that. For this particular ink set that we're mixing, they're all coming out as more than a gram. So this one, for example, is 45 grams exactly. So therefore we can use our normal digital scales that goes right up to five or 600 grams. We're gonna use it in the, in the pot and follow the formula that we've printed out on the, from Magnamix. And um, just saying that we like to do, I'm not sure what other people do in your studio, but we like to put in the bases first and then add the pigments. Um, this is just because we found when we added the pigments first, they kind of spread around the sides of the tub. So I can go ahead and mix the inks. The screens we're using for printing this job are 55T screens and they're static aluminium frames. And we used a tension meter to make sure that the tension of all the meshes were very, very similar and they were all coming around the 21 Newton mark. This is gonna help um, registering and also making sure that our prints are all hitting in the same place as we go to print. Learning from our trip from Magna Colors where they suggested that we have super high tension screens you could even opt to use eco snap frames. If you use those, then you can control the tension even more and get higher tension on your meshes. You can also swap out the meshes for different jobs. We've done a whole video and I'm gonna try and put a link around here explaining all about eco snap frames and why they might be good for your studio. As this is a four color job, as usual, we've used our exposure guide and our registration template and the links for both of those can be found in our description below.
We've already gone ahead and aligned our screens. We've also done YouTube videos about that. However, what the point I'm trying to make is that when we're printing with water-based inks, one of the advantages is that if our alignment wasn't perfect when we printed it, we can very quickly adapt it by just washing the screen off with a little bit of water and a sponge. That's a bit different from plastic ink printing where we'd have to get some chemicals out and it's a little bit more involved. So that's just like a, a good little point for using water-based inks. When we went to mag the colours, we also observed that they did one flood and then two print strokes. That again isn't something that we're used to doing with our normal plaster link printing technique, but we're definitely going to give that a go. And the reason that they suggested that is to like ensure that you're clearing the mesh really thoroughly of all the water-based ink. So on that second stroke, it's kind of like picking up those little tiny bits of ink that you couldn't have got on the first stroke. It's also going to help with reducing pinholes in underbases and that type of thing. Also, when it comes to the flooding, it's not like a normal flood where you're just trying to fill the mesh up with ink for your next print. This is about leaving a very thick deposit of ink across the whole of the top of the screen. And that is really to stop the water in the water base of the ink from actually evaporating. So we're trying to stop evaporation, not filling the mesh with plus sol ink like normal. So again, we're gonna leave a very heavy flood and we're gonna do that by when we're doing our flood stroke, just easing off the squeegee a little bit and just dragging a thick layer across. Something else that we're gonna try is we're gonna actually do this printing wet on wet. So that isn't particularly something they said at Magna Colors, but we feel that on a light garment, this is something that we can definitely get away with. We're gonna experiment. We're not gonna do the flashing in between colors and we're not that concerned with colors very slightly lifting off onto the next screen. So I'm gonna to talk to you at the end about how that went as well. Another thing is that we're going to just be printing with one platen. That's super unusual for us when we have the cruiser and we've got four platens available. The reason for this is we're adapting what we learned in Magna Colors because they had a big conveyor dryer and an automatic press. So they were able to print all four colors at once, but we have to print one color at a time manually and our dryer is quite small. So our dryer on the slowest setting will allow the t-shirt to be under the heat for like just over a minute and a half or something. So we have to slow the conveyor belt right down for the shirt to be under there for the right amount of time. So we just want to put on one shirt at a time, let it get under there print all the colors of the next shirt, put that in. So we've kind of had to adapt our advice for what the machine and the curing system that we already have in place. Two pieces of kit that have been incredibly important in our studio, considering that we're a small manual studio with single phase electricity, have been the Cruiser by M&R and the Big Buddy. These have allowed us to do pretty much every single job that's been put our way and they're just really adaptable, but they also complement each other in how much capacity they can actually take. If you want to invest in kit like this for your studio, I'd highly suggest going to someone like Screen Print World in the UK, and you can even use our discount code, which is CRP5, to get a little bit of a discount for your studio.
We specifically chose to print with this ink because it already works with our setup. So you cure this ink at 165 degrees for a minute, which is basically what we do with our Plasol printing anyway. Um, it meant that we can use our Big Buddy conveyor dryer just as normal. And just so you know, we've got our settings on 842 for the temperature and our belt speed is six. Now, I don't want you to rely on our settings, but the most important thing is that um, when the dryer's at those settings, the surface of the ink, the temperature of that ink surface is at 165 degrees. So I always use uh, an infrared gun and I point the laser at the surface of the ink when it's in the dryer. I confirm that it's at 165 degrees and then I know that my ink is going to cure as what the ink manufacturer has told me that it's going to work. There are of course other ways of curing water-based ink because it's mainly about getting the water out of the ink. So a lot of people use a heat press to evaporate the ink and you can also use a cold cure additive which goes into the ink and means that it just dries at room temperature over the next like 24 to 48 hours. Now technically the best circumstances are if you have a big conveyor dryer which has like gas forced like air circulation like the hot air is circulating through the shirt and really evaporating all the water. A lot of small studios can't have that, so um, we have had really good results with just this conveyor dryer. I didn't think this video was going to be complete without doing some wash tests. So I have here, I've got the unwashed, freshly printed one, and these two have been through a 30 degree wash in the washing machine, and uh, they're all dried out. And we wanted to also do a comparison between a white shirt and the natural raw equivalent just to check if there isn't any kind of like extra absorption or anything like that or so that the colours didn't lose any of their vibrancy when you printed it on the natural raw versus the white. Uh, these are both fuses by Stanley and Stella just for your information. Um, so I can't see any loss of colour from the washed and unwashed variations. And um, there's just something with water-based where you kind of haven't got the same trust in it being cured as much as Plastol. Because Plastol ink, when it comes off the dryer, you leave it to cool down and you can even do like stretch tests, make sure the ink is flexible and that type of thing. With water-based you can't really do it in the same way. So the way to test this water-based ink being cured is first the wash test, which is timely, time consuming, but also it's simulating the crock test that we saw up in Magna Colors. So I'm gonna do that by getting a rag, a nice white rag, and just rubbing, rubbing some of the ink sections with my finger. And what I'm trying to do is rub it, not like crazy or anything, but I'm gonna try and see if any of the ink lifts off the garment onto the rag. So yeah, I'm gonna just rub some sections. Um, I am going for it. I can't see anything there, no lift off at all. I'm going to do a bit of the green and a bit of the black. And the black area. So I can't see anything. I didn't see any loss of colour from the wash test, so I'm really quite sure that that is nicely cured and that the water evaporated and it effectively stained the shirt. Um, one of the other things about printing with water-based ink that we were trying to get, one of the results we were trying to get, was this really soft hand feel. So the ink does feel a part of the fabric, but we've also got these kind of like soft hand results with Plastisol. And I know a lot of people are going to say, no, you haven't, but we've literally just got like Plastisol printed shirts at the front, put them next to it, and we could still feel the, the very slight inky feel on the shirt. Now, when we used to print with water-based, it really did sit in the fabric. But I feel like these inks have been engineered to be more user-friendly with manual printers. And um, yeah, you can slightly feel the ink on the garment. So it's, it's not a disadvantage, but um, the soft hand feel isn't 100% like the cotton. It's just something that we just noticed and wanted to bring up. Um, but overall, we're pretty happy with the printing, you do have to be a bit on the ink management, and by ink management I mean like 
making sure that the screen is flooded all the time, that you've got moisture in the ink. So it is slightly more technical to work with, but we're also pleased with the results. We've just finished printing this design and it came out great. However, we did have to change our tactics a little bit. So right at the beginning of the video, I said that we were going to print uh, wet on wet. So that means we didn't flash in between the colors. However, when we did about four or five shirts, we noticed that the ink and the shirt was lifting very slightly when it came to the last color. And that was nothing to do with the platen adhesive or the shirt not being held tight. It was more of this kind of like suction of the wet ink on the underside of the screen. So then we reverted back to how we normally print with all four platens and using a flash to partly dry the ink throughout the print run. That is technically what Magna Colors told us and the only reason I went for wet on wet printing in the, in the beginning was because I was scared that the ink was going to dry in the screens. That didn't happen. I shouldn't have been scared of the ink drying in the screens, especially when there's lots of colors. So um, yeah, you can flash in between layers and that gives a more consistent print and there isn't any lift off or issues after that. The next thing I didn't really talk about in the video is all the finishing touches that we added to the shirts. So when I talk about finishing touches, I mean things like inside neck labels. So we went for this quite big inside neck label in there. And that's because we wanted to emphasize that this is a collaboration shirt with Delphic Brewing. So we wanted to put their logo in as many places as possible. So this is an ultra color transfer, which we got from Target Transfers as usual. And we've done videos on that. And you can also still use our discount code, which is squeegee in, at the checkout and Target Transfers. Um, more things that we did were we added the little logo sticker to our swing tickets and um, they're already in the design on the back. And then we also made these little bags. These are, keep the shirts organized from when they're being sold at markets, the brewery, websites, all that type of thing. But also they just look a little bit neater. And we were able to add another sticker there for organization of what sizes are in there. And the brewery are actually trying to organize beer mats and to go along with the shirts. So if we have the beer mats inside these bags, that's going to keep them all contained and looking really neat. We hope you found this video useful and if you like the t-shirt, you can buy it from the blindmaggot.co.uk website and don't forget to add squeegee to get £10 off at the checkout. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like, follow and subscribe for more videos like this. White garment. These are all... Um, Sorry, I've just gone off on one.